Hello, all you here as villains and innocent bystanders. Welcome to another episode of An Angel and Her Unicorn comic book reviews. I'm Alan the Unicorn, and with me today is uh, Raylan the Hyena. The Hyena. So I love our names. I just love them. They make me so happy. We will be spoiling the books for the week, so if you haven't read your books, make sure that you pause the video or stop it. Or but always come back and read your books, and then come back and bring them with you. Or you can just go ahead and let us spoil them for you, anyways and then see what you think later. Um, if you can, like, share, and subscribe. We always would love to have more people so that we can have a better conversation. Uh, more universal conversation would be amazing. That's always my goal. Uh, but until then, I guess we'll uh, start ruining the books of the week. Okay. What is your pick, first pick of the week? My first pick shall be... I'll review the Domino Hot Shot. So it's the number one. Yes. And Gail and, Simone is doing the writing. And I, I think know. David something or other. What was the... Where'd it go? I think it was on the cover. What is it? David... Baldion. Baldion. Um, and I think he actually did Harley Quinn for a little while. All right. So it starts in this uh, Antarctica coastline where this thing crashes into it, and it's like this alien type thing. These two guys discover it. Mm -hmm. One touches it and, like, becomes... Kind of gets infected. Gets infected with Which it. Which is never good. Never, never touch space herpes. Gross. And then it goes back to Paris with Black Widow um, right now undercover, and she's with Domino, and they're talking about a secret mission... And one of them is, and one of the bad guys is actually there. And so they use that. And then um, Natasha almost gets, uh, what's her name? White Fox. White Fox. Yeah, she thinks she's, she goes, she tells Domino, because Domino does her little luck thing and, mm -hmm. and takes out the bad guys or the people watching him. And then um, uh, uh, Black Widow's like, you missed one. She throws this knife and... And then the white white fox like grabs it, right? Isn't the white fox? I think yeah, white yeah. fox. Which she looks kind of cool. She's new. I've never so, seen her before. Oh, so you don't know who she is? No, I mean if she's been in the books, I don't know where from because I don't read. I either don't read that book or she was a very small part. So, so how did she sure. use her power in this book? Which one? Domino. I don't see. Her well, because remember power. when she had? She goes, I know your powers work because uh, I tried to shock you with my my electro shot, my widow bite, and it didn't work. And so her luck powers. When they shook hands, she tried to shock her with her widow's bite, and it short circuited to save Domino. So Domino's luck powers are in effect. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, they get their little team together. They're in the Wakanda spaceship comes, and they get in and. Um, there's Black Widow, Outlaw, Diamondback, uh, Atlas Bear, and Black, White Fox. And so... And Domino. Uh, yeah, Black Widow and White Fox. Uh, so the original book was just Domino. This one's Hot Shots, but the original one was just Domino. And, and Outlaw, Diamondback, Domino were in it. And at the end of the series, Atlas Bear came into it. Um, so they... And, and they both um, Black Widow and White Fox are like former agents. Yeah. Except Natasha was once for Russia. Yes. And White Fox is for South Korea. Yes. While the other, and then Atlas is for Wakanda. So they've got kind of like a little international thing. Thing. And then there yeah. you got Texas and the other one. Yeah. So they're talking and talking about. They're kind how of like. Yeah. Uh, what if what they get doesn't, um, when they get there, they don't get to, like, take it all for themselves. They have right. to, together. They've agreed that they're going to destroy it, that they're uh, not trying to, that, that one country is not going to get it over another country. Yeah, like, yeah. they were saying how Russia doesn't get it, Korea doesn't get yeah. it, Wakanda doesn't get it. Right. And so they get off the thing, and... Um, Domino tells him, if they try to take it, if the other three try to take it, then I want you to get them, and they're like, okay. Yeah, because so, Outlaw and Diamondback are kind of her buddies. Her buddies. Yeah. So then they get to this wall that they jump over, 
successfully. <laughs> and they're at this cemetery where is which they are looking for the thing. And this like person girl shows up who I guess is the garter or yeah. something. And so then the guy who's infected shows up and blasts the graveyard girl back and so they get ready to fight. And they're all fighting, and then... Which is really good. They did really good. Like, the good action scenes were really scene. cool. Yeah. And so, um, they're all fighting, and then uh, Outlaw goes to punch him and gets thrown back. Yeah. And so, the fight continues. Outlaw gets it on her hand while he is going... Yeah. I guess he's losing the power. Yeah, so he infected kind of a, he kind of infected Outlaw, but while he I guess while they're fighting he's got damage. So now And so now he's like cracking and going haywire. Yeah. And so they say disgusting and then Deadpool shows and up. And then Deadpool shows up. Da, 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 da. With Great his into the book. And my favorite part is when he starts talking and Domino's like, "Oh no." <laughs> So, what did you think about the book? Good. My favorite part was when Je- yeah, uh, uh, Deadpool shows up. Well, you like Deadpool. Yeah. You, you guys are a family of Deadpool kill lovers. You all extra <laughs> fancy. Um, if I kill you all extra fancy, can we still be friends? Always. Always. If you don't, if you don't kill me extra fancy, we will never be friends, and I will haunt you for life. So, I thought it was really good. A uh, great number one. It's really fun. It's a kind of uh, uh, tet on tet uh, um, character uh, story. You know, they all got these little quips and uh, uh, definitely a lot of fun characters. I love strong female characters, so it's the whole cast is female. Um, Diamondback is like kind of my one of my favorite D list characters, and they've really done really great things with her. I like um, I like her character and, and kind of making her. I like Outlaws. Outlaw's funny. I, I now Outlaw was in Deadpool's book for a long time, but I don't, I didn't ever read it. So, but she's I like her as a, it's just a really fun like book. I don't think it's either anything really quite heavy or anything like that. So, I really enjoyed it. So, what would you give it? What about um, the art? What did you think about the art? The art was really good. Yeah, I, I really, really liked him liked when it. he did Harley. Did you ever read any of the Harleys when he did that? I don't know what Harley. It was the beginning of the the Harley series, so. Oh, then. No, I haven't, I read, haven't yet. read any of the like early Harleys because yeah. I haven't found them. Or maybe I'll have to uh, find a download for you or something so you can look, watch or read them. Um. So overall, what would you give the book? Um, four out of five. I would agree. I would almost give it a five out of five because I really enjoyed it. Just because it's got a lot of fun premises, the art's really good, the writing's really good, the dialogue's fun, the characters are kind of interesting. Um, so I, I almost, I would say for me personally, it'd be a five on five out of five. But I, I can't. I feel like you can definitely enjoy this book. You know, a, a lot of audiences will enjoy this book. Um, so I'm gonna do Meet the Scrolls. Um, let's see. I know takes forever so uh this meet the scrolls is a number one uh the writer is robbie thompson and the artist is nico hetrion harishan harishan so so sorry i feel like we say that every i feel like we say that every every episode so the beginning of the book they talk they kind of give they define what a scroll is is a member yeah something and so uh, it starts off with this guy. Yes, he kind of kills these uh, these hidden scrolls. And, and this he... is in the past. Mm-hmm. And then they cut to today, today. And it's a girl kind of, uh, she's kind of the outsider. The mean girls are being mean to her. And all of a sudden she disappears. And there's a butterfly out of nowhere. Um, and then come to find out the butterfly is her. Uh, so she gets home. And there's a family. And they all are scrolls sitting for dinner. Oh, I and thought they, that was a baby scroll at first. And I'm like, nope, they're no, just No, no baby scrolls her. yet. Yep, they're, they're just holding hands. They're just holding hands for just them. holding hands. You want to hold my hand? Sure. You want to hold my hand? Mm. I want to hold your hand. All right, okay. quit. It's gross. So, <laughs> they start giving their reports. The mom talks about how, uh, or the older sister talks about how she was mean to other girls. So, the mean girl kind of led her into her inner circle um, and then the mom talks about how she blackmailed, uh, 
uh, somebody to get uh, her person that she's representing higher up. And then the dad talks about um, he kind of helped uh, Stark um, or Iron Man uh, defeat this guy. And so he's kind of getting his way in. So they're all kind of working to the skull, which you don't quite know. Uh, they talk about this particular project um, that is uh, that they need to stop. And um, then it kind of goes into like more of a um, personal note where the... The young girl that ran away from the butterfly, she was supposed to make friends with these girls, and but they're mean to her, so she didn't want to do it. Um, so they all obviously are mad at her because she's not doing her mission. Um, and then the young, the older daughter turns back into her human form. I think she's kind of like enjoying reveling in, in the meanness, <laughs> uh, being cruel. And then um, the father meets with somebody, and they are, it is another agent, uh, another scroll agent, that is again start trying to stop this project um that they are uh if they, it goes into effect they won't be able none of them will be able to hide in, in in earth ever again so uh project blossom i think is what it's called so they try to stop this project blossom so that they can continue to hide um and then it's got uh some friends or the scroll family they killed at the beginning he uh, the dad sees this family and he, he's worried about his family and then the guy that killed the scroll family in the beginning uh, finds the butterflies, and so he's he's kind of on the trail now. Um, so this is a kind of interesting book. It's almost like a I feel like it's um, um, oh, there was a show that was on Amazon or that was I think it was Amazon, but it had um, Carrie Russell and the guy from uh, Brothers and Sisters, uh, but they were Russian spies. And this kind of what it reminds me of. It's very like. They're infiltrating, you know, the American society, infiltrating it and trying to, um, you know, disrupt things. And uh, it's kind of fun. It's interesting. Um, and so I His really enjoyed it. His reminds me of Thanos. It kind of does. But they, I, I feel like the artist that's in the, the artist, um, uh, Nico, he does, they do really well with uh, kind of making them look like a different type of scroll. It's almost like a... The chin isn't that prominent. It's just got lines in it and stuff. Yeah. So it's really fun. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great issue one. I think it's more of an espionage uh, book more than a um, uh, like superpowers or superheroes kind of book. I think there'll probably be superheroes in it, but I definitely feel like that's not the premise they're going for. I feel like it's definitely more of a um, secret agent kind of infiltration spy kind of uh, book or feel. And uh, with some really, really great art. Art really fits the book. We're going to do mandatory naps for both of you, I swear. Mandatory naps before you guys get on the show. I had to wake up early. Oh, I'm sorry. And you lost an hour because we had time change. So you actually had to wake up early and you lost an hour. I'm going to get you some beauty sleep next time, I promise. Okay. So overall, I would probably give it a 4 out of 5 unicorn horns. Definitely a great start. Um, it, I can see where it's not going to be everybody's book. Um, you know, it could be a book where it's more of a, um, spy book and not quite a superhero book. So if you're more of a superhero person, then, um, it may not be your thing, but still really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I'm going to, I can't wait for issue two. So it's Age of X-Men. Great. I got you. Well, here, tap it and then go all the way like that. So we're going to do Age of X-Men, Prisoner. Prisoner X? Prisoner X, I believe. Yep. And let's see. we got to find the writer. There it goes. So. Prisoner X. Prisoner X. The writer is Vita Ayala. Ayala? And then the artist is German Perlata. 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 So it starts in the Danger Room prison complex where you hear a bishop go in through the prison and then he meets with the guy who puts him in his cell and stuff. So like the warden. It seems like it's Forge. From... And so um, you see Beast who's a janitor. Beast is a big boy. And then you see Moonstar and Polaris. So he's going... Talking stuff. Hang on. 
Oh, that's that's the whole page. <laughs> it's a splash page. <laughs> and then he gets this background of him when he was on battlefield with uh who is that? I can't remember. I can't remember the guy, but he gets a flashback slash memory. And then um cuts back to the prison. Back to the present prison and it's lunchtime and you see different heroes. You see Moonstar Polaris again and then you see Ink Mm -hmm. and Gabby and then he sees her and he recognizes her so this is his sister Shard she's from the future can she do powers um so in the old book she was a illusion or a hologram or somebody something he saw like he was kind of like a a she was kind of a vision of from him and then they made her into a hologram and then she kind of was, she was more of like a yeah a light hologram but i don't remember her i can't remember what her powers were i think she can like uh sh- like break things apart but i can't remember it's been a while since i've read it but so it's kind of a figment figment of his imagination so he's she's not really there right she isn't no that's oh. why she, that's why he's talking to her and then she's like he's like she's like who are you talking to and she's gone Oh, yeah, and then Gabby's like, move it. Some of us are still hungry, being her normal self. (laughs) And then she says, you and Lorna know the same invisible people, because she's talking about Polaris. Yeah. And so, then Beast gets mad, because he doesn't want him talking to Gabby. Right, because he's kind of like Gabby's protector. And so he gets mad, and Moonstar's like, Hey, there's no reason for that. Just be chill. She's yeah, she's trying to calm the calm the prison right down. So they're talking it only has five percent. We better hurry. Okay. So they're talking and then he it's at the basketball court, Polaris is there, Gabby's there playing and he has a flashback of Gabby. A good one of when she was eating and then a bad one of when she was an assassin. Right. And so she goes on the court, and she's he's talking to her, and she's like, hey, it's, and she's still being kind of rude, and she's like, it's okay, I won't tell Beast about you, you talking to me. And then he sees Polaris, and he's talking to her. Is that Polaris right there? Yeah. So, yeah, and then he sees a flashback of Polaris, and he's talking to her, then Moonstar. And so him and Moonstar talk, start talking about different things and the past and stuff and then he gets a flashback of Moonstar and they're talking and then it's dinner and Beast is beating him up now and Gabby's like sorry I lied about not telling on you (laughs) so he's and then he gets a flashback of him and Beast uh-huh. when he was Beast was fixing his gun and he gets a punch to the gut and it's still this big fight <laughs> and Gabby gives him a chair to hit Bishop with so she's like a really bad antagonizer. Yeah, she's a bad influence. Horrible. Horrible influence. And so then Beast and Bishop are acquainted back to their cells and Moonstar tells him something. Because he's been having, he's kind of having these dreams this whole yeah. time, and so she's kind of she talks about earlier like <clears throat> how her dreams are true. You know, she's like, yeah, I have dreams too, but. <clears throat> so she has another one, and it has this weird, creepy spider guy. So that's the Shadow King. Oh. And then it has. The apocalypse. Apocalypse, and it has Cyclops. Jean Grey, Storm, and I think that's Wolfsbane. Colossus. And that's X-23. That is? Yep. But X- that's that's their Age of X-Men costumes. Oh. See, Colossus has no arm. The, I know, has and the, Storm has yeah. a weird one. So it's like their Jean Grey, yeah, Colossus, they, yeah. Morn, X-23, and Storm. And then he sees another one of uh, that guy again and the his Sentinel. sister. Yeah. 
taking shards. I do not like sentinels. I know they they get. You know. I don't get why they had to make those in the comics. I don't like them. <laughs> so the last thing that happens is the dream is real. The reality falls. Get out, and it says to be continued. And so. So what do you think of the book? I really liked it. Yeah. Did you um uh? Oh, that's the wider one. Did you um. Uh, like the art? Yeah, it was good. I think it was pretty good. Like, it's kind of interesting to see, like, the, I mean, but I feel like this is very old hat. Like, a lot of it was um, very stuff that they've done before, and so I'm curious to see if they're going to do something different than they did before. But um, I feel like it's over and over again. Like, it's always Bishop. So we'll see how, how it plays out. Um, overall, what would you, what kind of uh, rating would you give it? Um, four out of five. Okay. All right, I'm going to do Morning in America. So you have one more book and I have one more. Mm-hmm. Hopefully if our, if our uh, iPad stays charged. I don't have a charger in here. Fingers crossed, hopefully we'll find one. Um, so I'm going to do Morning in America. It's written by uh, Magdalena... Uh, Vasiago, and the, it's illustrated by Claudia Aguirre, and um, I, so, let's see. So, it's kind of got, uh, these people are missing, they're being taken, uh, and, um... Tucker, Ohio, 1983. Mm-hmm. So, it's kind of in the past, kind of in the 80s, um, and so they have where they, um, uh, they got it so that they have like uh they're kind of like the mean girls and they have um they're kind of like i don't even know how to describe it they've got like records they've got a record of you know where they are all kind of in trouble um like vandalism and assault and then there's one girl out of the four that is kind of like the newer girl um then there's the you know the head mean girl um, then there's one that's kind of like, she's just kind of the sidekick of the group. Um, but they're all called the six sisters. And so they go and they are, like I said, like they're kind of the mean girls, the bad girls. They smoke after, you know, they smoke after school, all that stuff. Um, the one sidekick girl, her family is Hispanic and they have a lot of, uh, the I mom and dad are fighting. Well, quit picking it. Save it for later. Get you something to do later. <laughs> so the mom and dad are kind of fighting. So she goes to school to kind of get away from things, be with her friends. And they realize, they show that there's a lot more disappearances. Um, and the cops are not really doing anything. And this girl is kind of starting to uh, want to investigate. And so uh, her friends are trying to tell her, you know, just, just relax. It's nothing that big of a deal. And she's like, no, no, the cops aren't trying to help. Nobody's trying to help. Um, and she, some guy comes up to her to try to get, uh, uh, see if she has any drugs. And she says, no, but I have cigarettes. I'll sell them to you after school. So they meet later and he, um, all of a sudden a, a big bat creature comes and tries to take, um, or he tells him, he tells her a story about this bat creature taking one of his friends. And so she's like, whatever, you're just crazy. You're, you're high. I don't, you know, I don't care. And he tries to attack her and she's trying to really get his point across so she kind of beats him up uh the cops come and uh she gets in trouble again for for trying to sell cigarettes so the mom gets her out of it and that's when she sees the cops the cops are kind of talking at the police station uh, about how they're not really going to do anything one cop wants to investigate and the other cops like look the runaways we're not dealing with this we're not doing anything um so the girl goes to the group the six sisters and uh, she's like look we need to find these people we need to do something because only we you know as the outcasts of the group or as the vandals of the of the city we we are only going to be able to figure it out um why these people are missing so they're making it out to be like a kind of a vampire-esque creature or a bat creature that keeps taking them like snatches them up so i'm curious to see what um uh uh they're going to do but it is kind of a a lesser known book it's by um a different company, uh, Oni Press. So it's a smaller company. So I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see where this is gonna go. So I think I'm gonna pick up issue two just because out of curiosity. 
The art was really kind of middle of the road. It was almost like a comic or a strip out of the out of the like newspapers, and um, reminded me a lot of like uh, the Hellcat series that just ended not too long ago from Marvel. Kind of that like cartoony um, anime esque kind of look, um, but yeah, it wasn't the story wasn't super intriguing. The art wasn't super intriguing. But it does pique my curiosity to see what they're going to do with it. So I, I'll be back for issue two just to see what they're going to go with that. Um, but I, I give a middle of the road score, three out of five unicorn horns, um, something that I'm um, curious to see what's going to happen. So, All right. Last one for you. You got to start all over again, huh? There goes the writer and artist. Don't go too far. There you go. That's the Trails of Harlequin Metamorphosis. I don't think we're there yet. Well, that was that was the name of the that was the name of this. No. Oh. The name of the of this particular issue was the Trials of Harlequin Metamorphosis. There you go. Mm. It's by Sam Humphreys. Is the writer. And the inks are pencils. Pencils, I mean, are by Sammy Basari. So it starts with the future where she's this like alien or like warrior. Yeah, like this well, she's like this angel of vengeance or justice or something. She's got yeah. this cool armor and big giant wings and this flaming sword. Uh huh. And which is like everybody's dream. And so then she wakes up and she looks in the mirror and she's like, what am I? Because she's got like this bug head. Yeah. And so and then it goes back to 24 hours ago where she was at this place and she has this belt on. And so her and her friend, what's her name? Tina. Tina are there. And they're going to like do- this big giant monster creature. Yeah, and they're going to do the t- t- dunk tank. Dunk tank. Well, Tina's scared because she's like bigger and she's like monster. While Harley Quinn's like skinny and pretty, and so she's nervous to go there. And so when she goes there, they get in there, and Harley's able to sit, but Tina sits, and the whole thing breaks, and people start laughing, and then the witches start doing this chant and spell and curse Harley to be all ugly. Right. So she gets this face. And so then Tina comes in wondering what happened and she's like, oh no, monster. So she runs out. <laughs> she mistakes the, the partially bugged. bugged monster for Harley. Yeah. And then she goes into her blind friend or whatever. Uh-huh. And she's like. She can't talk to her. Talk to her. And so she's like, okay, since she's blind, she'll see me who I really yeah. am. The dog barks and doesn't know who she really is. But then once she touches her face, she's like, oh, gosh. And she screams. So she's out in the road now, and people are freaking out, and she's running. So she goes to this dumpster, <laughs> hi- and her hands are becoming the like a bug hand but she really really wanted to eat the stuff out of the dumpster and she goes oh gross i don't want to like i I don't want to eat this disgusting stuff in my stomach it smells so delicious but i don't i i want to eat it so bad but it's disgusting yeah i am i even human still and so she's still digging through the trash and tina comes looking for her in her outfit so she hides in the trash can she gets one of her gym things or whatever and it makes a noise, and then, not Starfire. No, but she's from the same planet she's as Starfire. like Starfire, right. kind of. And she's got the same hair, and I'm like, yeah. guys. And so she's like her mentor. Yeah. And so she's on roller skates for the first time, and trying roller skates, but it's not, and she runs into Tina, and she's not really that good at and it. And she's talking about some kind of trials that... Harley Quinn is trying to do so. Harley Quinn's got, I think there were six trials or seven trials, yeah. something like that. And, and it's all on the belt, right? Like when when she completes the trial, the belt lights up, 
And so yeah, she's and trying so, to get all these gems lit up so that the middle one will be done so she can become this avenging justice angel for so, yeah. order and chaos. And so when the dumpster falls, <laughs> Harley falls, and Tina's like, Harley, you are the monster? And so um, St- Miranda, I think is her name. Where is it? Miranda. Miranda. Yeah. So Miranda's telling her in, about what she's got to do and she can tell by the body language and she's telling her what she has to do and how she didn't work this hard and she's Harley freaking Quinn and she she just has to do this. Right. And then Tina's like, don't listen to her. You, you got this and I know how you feel and all this. Because Harley wants to give up. She wants to give up on the trial and then, and then Tina's trying to support her because she knows how she feels and, as a monster. Yeah, and then she's like, I'm sorry that I wasn't considerate of how you feel and stuff so then harley goes out to the dunk tape and it dunk tank and it's gonna do the dunk tank well people are scared and they're like oh my gosh so this one guy does it hits the ball and she goes into the dunk tank and turns back to normal because she realized what she had to do in order to break the spell or break the this, to get the trial was to and actually so, confront her ugliness or her her oddness and be okay with it be okay with it and so the witches are like oh no she broke it you can't break it yeah and they're like we'll be back and she's like up your mary poppins (laughs) that didn't make sense well she's being rude she's basically what she's doing Uh. (laughs) she's saying inappropriate things without saying inappropriate things Uh. So then the belt lights up again, yes. and she's she like, passed I passed trial. the second trial. And Miranda is like, see, I knew she would do it. I knew she was the perfect candidate. And then back at the lab, Star Lab, something's going on, and all these little demon black things come out. Which I think is going to be the next trial for her. Yeah. Like all those little monster things. So, what did you think? I thought it was really good. That was my favorite of today's. I I liked it, but I didn't understand what was going on because I didn't read the other issues, so I wasn't quite sure what the trials are about, like how that all came about. So it kind of makes you want to go back and read all the trials to see what how, why what she's trying to accomplish. I was able to understand so, it. I mean, I don't get where the trials came from, right. but I was able to get the right. feel no, I, of it. I totally agree. You definitely get the... You understand it. It doesn't explains everything, but you don't understand how she got there, which is kind of what's interesting, which I would kind of like to... To see, so I actually kind of like to read the other ones to see what they are uh, were about. What do you think about the art? That was really good. It was really good. Like I really like the bug head was really cool, and the and coloring liked, was really neat. I liked her buns. Yes, uh, Miranda. Miranda and uh, Tina was really cool. Miranda. Like I like her, like her big, uh, her big shoulders and the giant horns, and like her when she sees the monster, so she gets all her armor on to go smite the yes. monster. So, I thought that was really good. I really liked it. It was fun. It was, probably wasn't my favorite out of all of them, but I definitely liked it. I, I thought it was neat. It was my favorite just because I'm a Harley Quinn fan. Yeah, I can see that. So, what would you rate it? Five. Five out of five. I'd give it a four out of five. Um, I definitely think uh, if you don't know what's going on, you can catch up really easily. Um, and I also think it almost inspires you to go back and read some of the other ones to see what's going on because it's kind of interesting to see how she's got here, what that belt's about, and what the trials are for. So... All right, I'm going to do, it's called Obey Me, and it is by, I think, Dynamite. Let it download. Dynamite. Wait for it. Dynamite. So it's by Dynamite, um, and it's number zero. Um, Mario uh, Mentasti and Ben Herrera. Mentasti. Um, they are the writers and the artists. And then, so it's about this... This girl's kind of sitting out waiting for... The slums. Uh, is that a, the slums? Right. I like to tell the location. I know you do. I love it. It's one of my favorite things about you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, let's go. <laughs> so she's waiting for some kind of somebody, and then you this dog shows up, and she's trying to pet the dog, and the dog like, starts talking. So she's like, oh, you're my, you're my backup. You're my, my other agent. And they kind of allude to being like demons... Or uh, something to collect souls. So they have to go get this one soul uh, of this guy. And he's held up in this building. And so um, her and the dog are going to 
kind of storm this building and try to get this guy back. Uh, the dog wants to just go in and murder everybody, and the girl's like, well, let's try something a little different. So they go around the back, and there's a couple guards. So the dog goes and distracts them by being a dog, and then he eats them, or eats one of them, and so the girl comes up. bites into their throat. Yeah, yeah. It gets pretty violent. And then the girl shows, and she kind of, like, does this little glowy thing, and next thing you know, she's, like, this super awesome, like, fighter, kills all the guys, and they go inside looking for this guy again, come into the kitchen, and she's like, you can leave, or you can do it the hard way. Um, classic line. So they, all of course, all the chefs are going to back him up, so they, they go to fight her. She, um, fighting ensues, lots of death and dismemberment, uh, different ways to die, lighting people on fire, lots of fun. Uh, so then she breaks in, and she tells the dog to get, uh, get a big chunk of one of the guys and bring it with them. So she goes into the next room, and she's like, look, we can do this the hard way, or we can do we this the easy. easy way. And then the dog comes in with one of the chef's heads. Uh-huh. And she's like, and so it's kind of an intimidation tactic. She goes, so you can leave now or not? And the this one guy kind of gets skittish, shoots the gun, and it uh, knocks her all the way back into the wall. With a, he, like, you think she's dead. So the guy's like, he's like, okay, we got her, we got her. And the dog's like, oh, nope, you're in big trouble. And they're like, we shot her. And next thing you know, she, uh, she's gone. She disappears. And then she's coming at them with a knife. So she goes at them. She starts fighting them. Um, she's got this big giant wound in her, in her belly. And uh, so she uses it to collect all their souls. And uh, when she collects her souls, like the energy from them kind of explodes and that's where it ends. So it's just kind of this introduction of this character. I'm not quite sure what exactly she is, who exactly she is. If this is, if these two characters are going to be. potty mouth. He is a potty mouth. Well, the whole book's a little potty, potty mouth violence. Um, probably not appropriate for younger, younger readers. But I'm curious to see. And then that's the next part. I think this is just an alternate cover. Ah. Uh. Um. There so, it yep, the, it's all the different variant covers. <laughs> nope, that just says 15. They all say 15. Damn. Yep, they're all different covers. Just variants. Black and whites and stuff. Um, But it's interesting, but I don't know if it's interesting enough to keep me to read number one. Um, So, uh, I'm not for sure. I'm not for sure if I'm going to see what it's going to happen. It wasn't that interesting. It didn't really give me enough to want to see what's going on um so it was okay middle of the road three out of five unicorn horns um i hope it does well and if somebody reads number one and and it's actually really really good let me know so maybe i can start picking it up but um even the art the art is very uh uh cartoony uh very um to uh, me the art's good no it's good i just think it's very uh um like the angles and the shapes are a lot. People look really elongated. They look very uh, um, ill proportioned. So like she's got these really big feet, and so it's it's interesting. Um, I'm curious to see the where dog. they're gonna go with it. The, the dog, dog is really so fun. Good. Yeah, I like the I dog. Think the dog is my does favorite it have character. A name? He does, but I don't remember what it is. I have to look through it. So he is a potty mouth. Maybe that's what we should call him, potty mouth, potty mouth Doberman. So it. I'm curious to see what, the Dobie. what one will bring, hopefully do well. Um, yeah, nothing really too too exciting to say about it. I don't feel like it's really breaking new ground. I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle of the road of things. So, three out of five unicorn horns. We'll see. Hopefully somebody will read it and say it's amazing, and um, I'll have to pick it back up and start reading um, Obey Me. So, that was your books, my books. Let's talk about pool list, and then we'll go from there. And we'll be done. Okay? Mm. So, I also read Young Justice number three. It, in it, um, they have a, um, they talk about uh, um, Impulse meets uh, uh, Superboy. And Superboy's been on Gemworld this whole time. They kind of show how he got there. Um, at the end of the book, they reveal that he's got a uh, wife and kids there, um, and he's kind of like not fighting the general people, so they haven't really talked about why he's not fighting. I think it's because he had the family there, so then they 
they kind of bring in the premise a little bit more of the gem world. Uh, they show that the other Teen Titans are stuck in this hole and they're they're kind of all mad at each other because they're all stuck in this hole. Um, and so it's, I'm I like this book. It's fun. The art's fun. Um, it's really entertaining. I give it a four out of five. Unicorn horns. Definitely probably my favorite of the of that um, new is that launch. All your poll is? This is all the ones I read this week. Uh, Star Wars number sixty two. Um, they're just further in the story. They uh, they're finally gonna go after that the queen or that uh, the queen that betrayed uh, Princess Leia. Um, so they've kind of this book. They're kind of getting a team together and um, uh, uh, getting ready to assault this place to be able to attack um, this queen and, and kind of get somewhat of a revenge. But there's there's Princess Leia is like I'm not really trying to do it for revenge. I want to do it for other reasons. You know, just to be able to hurt the rebellion. Um, I did Paper Girls number 26. Uh, it shows what happens to the girls. Last issue, they had like this bomb explode. So this issue, they talk about where the girls ended up. Different various places and time and, and, and uh, uh, around the world and galaxy. And so it shows up where they kind of end up. Um, kind of setting up, I think, the very end of the book. The They're kind of getting to the end of it. So I love Paper Girls. I love... Uh, um, uh, Ours is this game of mine, Cliff Chang. Um, I love him. The art's really fun. The 80s references are amazing. The um, uh, references and time periods are, are all amazing. So I just I really, really like this book. Five out of five unicorn horns. I'm super excited. Um, I want to see the end, but then I'm going to be upset because it's ended. So we'll see. Um, let's see. Justice League number 19. I don't even know why I'm still reading this book. It's so horrible. It's just... The premise is, is uh, so boring and lame. I just don't. I just don't even know why I'm still reading it. I'd say two out of five unicorn horns. Can but I, it I like to mark stuff out. You like to mark stuff out. Okay. And I'll so uh, I think George Jimenez uh, did uh, the art for it, which I love him, and that was probably the only saving grace about this book that I really enjoyed was actually his art. This art, this particular book, this issue did seem like things were a little bit more clear about what they're trying to do. But it's still the whole premise is convoluted with the the six mystery energies and this Perpetua girl and like a woman and she's like the creator of the universe and then they talk about the hierarchy of all these things and so it's like all these crazy cosmic things that are I don't it seems so forced that I'm just not a I'm sadly not a fan I was really done really upset all right what's next female furies. <sighs> female furies i really wanted this to be really good um i can see where people will find this as a good book because it does i think it tackles maybe something a little bit more heavy than i would want in my comic books especially considering that the female furies are supposed to be these strong female archetypes it definitely tears them down unfortunately i feel like it tears them down in a horrible light like it's there's a lot of rape and there's a lot of. Was it uh, the one you same storyline yeah. as the one you read last time? Yeah, and no, they and, and and like the sad part is like they show a lot of it, and I just don't feel like I feel like it's a little bit. It doesn't need to be shown. They can they can approach the subject a little bit differently. It's a little bit too in my face, and it, it kind of. I know it, the subject makes you uncomfortable, and I know it's supposed to be uncomfortable, and I understand that. But I feel like the way they're going about it is just not not the best, I feel like, to reach the most mass audience. I feel like they could have got their point across with a different way. And unfortunately, it makes the female furies, like, the female furies all attack their leader. She even tells them that she's being raped, and they're like, you're lying, all this stuff. It just seems really aggressive, and I, I was just... I just like the fashion show and the fashion I know, that was, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, well, they, the female fury is supposed to be strong, and Big Bart is supposed to be this great, strong character, and, you know, she escapes, she escapes Apocalypse. She loves Scott Free. She loves her baby. You know, this. there's this... She has a child? Mm-hmm, she does. Mm-hmm. It was really actually a really good series. But she's, like, she's not, like... She's yeah. supposed to be kind of a good guy-ish, but they make her into this horrible person. They make... The whole team into these horrible things, and I know it's apocalypse, but it's just like. And then there's this one scene where the she fights back for her attacker, and um, the art is really, really pretty. I think the art is really neat, but there's a part where she like she's supposed to be kind of like a dancer, and it's just a really awkward a fight dancer? scene. Yeah, it's just like a really awkward uh, fight scene. I just I don't quite understand 
the some of the poses looks kind of weird, kind of threw me off a little bit. All in all, I'm just, I, it was just not what I was hoping it would be. Um, so I give it a low grade. I give it probably a one out of five, maybe a two out of five, just because the art's really, really good. Um, and I like the characters, but unfortunately the story and the, the, some of the, some of the art is a little bit jarring and uh, a little bit standoffish. It doesn't make me want to get the next issue. It just, it's just a little bit too much. I don't know. It makes me sad. All right. Doomsday Clock. Doomsday Clock. Same thing. Gary Frank is an amazing, amazing artist. His art is just legit. Like he is, his stuff is just so concise. His panels are amazing. Um, I cannot say enough about Gary Frank's art, and I can see why it takes him a long time. Can you review Uncanny X-Men? That was the one you did. Oh, no, 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 I, no, I haven't done Uncanny X-Men yet. So, uh, but with that, like, uh, the story itself, I feel like it is a long story where finally something's semi kind of happening, but you're not really quite sure what's happening. They kind of put some of the pieces together. It's just sad because it's like, it's halfway through this, or I mean, like, they only have like two more issues or something like that, and they're supposed to be done. And I don't even feel like anything's... The whole premise was supposed to bring the the Watchmen into the DC world. And half the Watchmen are gone. And then half the books weren't even about the Watchmen. Half the books were about these two villains. Which, by the way, the villains were amazing. Um, the I think the Marionette and... Um, I can't remember her name. Um, but they were, they were super vicious. I really wish they would have done a spinoff instead of bringing them into this book. Um because you could have done something with the other characters in the Watchmen series that they never touched on. So I feel like for a Watchmen book, like for bringing the Watchmen into the Watchmen book, like none of the Watchmen are present, except for this one. This one has one of them, and he like just beats everybody up. Um, so I, super convoluted story, super intense story. I just wish it was a little bit... I wish it was done better. Um, for me, uh, I have a hard time reading it um i don't think i'm smart enough to put all the things together so uh two out of five unicorn horns for me uncanny x-men number 23 yeah so uh scott and wolverine and all the other x-men they freed uh some of the new mutants and they're kind of getting together they go and scott's like uh while the x-men are gone or he he, since the x-men are gone we're gonna finish this he goes everybody hates us we're getting to the point where we're um, almost, you know, we're almost to the point where nobody's going to be on our side or everybody's going to be hunting us. So let's go and stop our biggest threats and see what we can get done and do some good before everything comes to a crashing halt. So the, he makes a list. The first one they go after is this, uh, uh, they're trying to find Dark Beast. They find Dark Beast um, and they uh, kind of stop him. And so it's, it's that thing, it's what the story is going to be is this team trying to um, uh, uh, stop everybody. All right. So... That one's done. Okay. Have you done Papa Girl? Yeah, Paper Girl. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. One. That's paper. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. Then we're on die. Die. Uh, die number four? Yeah. Um, again, Karen Gillian, I, his, are, are his stories, I always feel like I'm missing something. I don't, it's such a weird, um, okay. it's such a weird, uh, book as far as, like, the story, because I don't feel like there's still not enough information these characters, I feel like we should have known them more than what we actually do. I like the reveals that they reveal, but I feel like this is definitely a slower burn book. I'm curious to see um, where it's going to go, so I'll, I will we'll continue reading. The art, um, um, the art is very inconsistent for me. Like I really like. There's some panels that are just beautiful. It looks like beautiful watercolor paintings and it's just glorious. Uh, um, sceneries and and really pretty characters and then there's some where i can't even tell who's what i can't they look like smears on the page page sometimes or it's too dark so i really hope that they can uh i hope that they the artist finds their kind of niche into the more pretty art the 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 watercolor art um but i i enjoyed it something new and kind of different um but still has a lot of kinks to work out and uh, the writing i wish they i wish he would reveal stuff i i know you want to hold on to things (laughs) and you want to reveal them small but you should at least set up your character so i can know who what's going on with them because i don't i don't understand i still i a lot of times i have to refer to the front to figure out who's who you know they refer to like their names and i I can't identify a name with a person because it's just there's so many things so uh i wish that would kind of clear up but still interesting read i can see where people really really would like this book because it is a different premise but so okay 
Champions three. Um, Champions three. Um, they kind of confront Mar- uh, um, uh, Mar- uh, Miles Morales about his uh, um, saving them from Mef- uh, the death of Mephisto. They kind of bring in the fact that <gasps> he didn't that's save her. Is the second part? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They bring in the girl that he didn't save, that or that he, that he saved, and then when he reversed Reverse time, time she didn't died. save. Yeah. So they talk about that, and they talk about the team kind of not being uh, a quite t- great teamwork because everybody's trying to showboat. Um, so it's a lot of a lot of interaction, really fun, kind of interesting uh, premises. Like I really like the the interaction with the group. Um, one of uh, Nova's villains comes and comes back for him, um, and he obviously doesn't have any power. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that. Um, yeah, it's a really fun read, really good superhero read, really great team book. I really enjoy it. Four out of five unicorn horns. It's probably one of my favorite kind of Marvel books so far, or uh, that's left. Avengers number back home? I don't know. Uh, no, no Road Home. No Avengers, Road Home. Yeah. Avengers No Road Home number four. Still really fun. Great art. And it, they kind of switched artists this time. They kind of tells the story of the, the villain a little bit more. Um, but I, I really enjoy it. It's the weekly book that they're doing now. Uh, uh, the other one was No Surrender. This one's No Road Home. I It's fun. I like the team. I like the art. I like the story. It's really fun. They're kind of doing a little bit of a... Like, you know, they are questing for these shards to stop the queen. And so it's a fun book. I like it. Uh, Four out of five unicorn horns, probably. All right, last one. Avengers number 16. Avengers number 16. Which one was that? I don't know. know. I'm trying to remember. I got Avengers No Road Home in my head. Uh, Avengers 16 was, oh, it was the vampires. Vampires are fighting vampires. They're fighting vampires. Uh, Ghost Rider gets his gets his mind back because he was out of control uh, and then they kick ghost right off the team it's slightly better than justice league but not by much sadly so three out of five unicorn horns because the art is really good um the story is okay it's a middle of the road story nothing really exciting um which is really disappointing because this is really far on to the avengers books and they should have done something and they fought i think it's like two years now and they fought two villains so mm. Really disappointed, Marvel. Really disappointed, DC, and your flagship ones. Justice League and Avengers, you should have that stuff together. Anyways, um, yeah, so three out of five unicorn horns. Meh. So, a lot of reads, a lot of books for me. Um, seems like you had some really good ones, yep. which I'm really happy about. And your your reviews were amazing. I really, I'm really proud of you. Good job. Yeah. Um, so until next week, if you can like, share, subscribe, and as Kelly loves to say, turn on your bell notifications. So when we post new videos, you can be told and you can like, share, and subscribe to those with all your friends. Um, until then, we hope your pull list is full. Bye.